8th grade, open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit 8, Lesson 3. Rational and Irrational Numbers. Problem number 1. Decide whether each number in this list is rational or irrational. Negative 13 divided by 3. That equals negative 4.3 repeating. Which is a rational number. So negative 13 divided by 3 is rational. 0 0.1234. This can be written as a fraction, so it is rational. The square root of 37. Since the square root of 37 never ends, and does not repeat, it is considered an irrational number. Negative 77. Since negative 77 can be written as the fraction negative 77 over 1, it is considered rational. Negative square root of 100. Since the square root of 100 is 10, then the negative square root of 100 is negative 10. Negative square root of 100 is rational. Negative square root of 12. Since the negative square root of 12 does not stop or repeat, it cannot be written as a fraction, and is considered irrational. Do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, tell a friend about this channel, and hit that thanks button. Problem number 2. Which value is an exact solution of the equation? m to the second power equals 14. Let's try 7. If m were 7, then m squared would be 49. Since 49 is not equal to 14, then 7 is not a solution of the equation m squared equals 14. b. If m were the square root of 14, then m squared would be 14. So the square root of 14 is a solution to m squared equals 14. c. 3.74. If m were 3.74, then m squared would be a little less than 14. Therefore, 3.74 cannot be a solution to the equation m squared equals 14. And finally d. The square root of 3.74. We know that the square root of 3.74 cannot be a solution to the equation m squared equals 14, because the solution was the square root of 14. Therefore, the square root of 3.74 is not a solution to the equation m square equals 14. In fact, the square root of 3.74 times the square root of 3.74 is 3.74, not 14. Problem number 3. From 8th grade, Unit 8, Lesson 2, a square has vertices 0 and 0, 5 and 2, 3 and 7, and negative 2 and 5. Which of these statements is true? This is what the graph of the square looks like. Let's use the graph to help us decide if the statements are true. When I took the side length of the square and placed it vertically, I see that it is between 5 and 6 units in length, so statement B is the correct statement. Problem number 4. From 8th grade, Unit 7, Lesson 8. Rewrite each expression in an equivalent form that uses a single exponent. a. 10 squared, all to the power of negative 3. Multiply the exponents and you have the expression, 10 to the power of negative 6. b. 3 to the power of negative 3, all to the power of 2. Multiply the exponents, and you have the expression 3 to the power of negative 6. c. 3 to the power of negative 5, times 4 to the power of negative 5. In this situation you multiply the bases. 3 times 4 is 12. The expression is 12 to the power of negative 5. d. 2 to the power of 5, times 3 to the power of negative 5. In this situation you move the base number that has the negative exponent to the bottom of the fraction, making the expression 2 2 the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 5, or 2 over 3, all to the power of 5. Problem number 5. From 8th grade, Unit 5, Lesson 5. The graph represents the area of Arctic sea ice in square kilometers as a function of the day of the year in 2016. A. Give an approximate interval of days when the area of Arctic sea ice was decreasing. According to the graph, the area of Arctic sea ice was decreasing from about day 77 to day 253. B. 
On which days was the area of Arctic sea ice 12 million square kilometers? The graph shows that there were three times when the area of the Arctic sea ice was about 12 million square kilometers, approximately, days 133, 350, and 359. Problem number 6 from 8th grade, Unit 4, Lesson 14. The high school is hosting an event for seniors but will also allow some juniors to attend. The principal approved the event for 200 students and decided the number of juniors should be 25% of the number of seniors. How many juniors will be allowed to attend? If you get stuck, try writing two equations that each represent the number of juniors and seniors at the event. Seniors plus juniors equals 200. The amount of juniors equals 25% of the number of seniors. That's 25 hundredths times the number of seniors. Substitute J with 0.25 S. Now the equation reads, S plus 0.25 S equals 200. That's the same as 1 S plus 0.25 S equals 200. That is 1.25 S equals 200. Solve for S by dividing both sides by 1.25. S equals 160. 200 minus 160 equals 40. There are 40 juniors going to the dance. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.